All right. Get hooked up to something here. There's a little small mouth, probably. Yeah, a little small mouth. <laughs> All right. He's a little bitty one. Let me get him here. I hooked a little bit bigger one over there a minute ago and uh, lost him. I was trying to catch one to open this video up. Let me get him off the hook here. All right, there we go. Little small mouth. Well, ain't they a pretty fish? I think of all the fish that God created, I about believe that's one of the prettiest little fish that you'll ever catch is a smallmouth bass. And uh, maybe if I hold him close to the camera, he'll get bigger. <laughs> but uh, no, nah, he's just a chunky little smallmouth. All right, let's turn him back before he gets too hot. Go on. There he goes. <laughs> All right. Well, turkey season is over. We got some time to kill before both season um, gets up on us here in October. And somebody asked me what I do when the turkey season ends. Oh, this is what I do. I like to get out and fish. And uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of fishing that can be done in the summertime. But right around here, you know, close to where I live at, we don't really, we're not fortunate enough to have any reservoirs or big lakes. You have to kind of go at least an hour to get to the closest pretty good sized lake. So most of our fishing right around the house is these uh, little creeks and, and rivers like this. This is actually um, a little, two little, uh, well, this is a little creek that comes together along with the river. Right here for many years, uh, I've been able to come down here and catch a uh, few bass, you know, some a lot bigger than that one off this same hole. And you know, in the summertime like this, what I like to do is just get out here and get an old pair of pants and old shoes and just get out here and wade, and wade the river and uh, just chunk and wind, you know, cast and, and chunk and wind and try to catch these smallmouth bass. There are some big smallmouths you know, like in this, said, in this I'm just most here. efficient of real rivers right here when I get out in the evenings like this and kind of bored and don't have nothing much to do. I just get out and fish the river. Uh, if you like, if, if you have good smallmouth fishing where you're at, uh, we'll give you a few smallmouth tips maybe this summer that might help some of you that maybe are just getting into fishing or maybe you haven't fished in a long time and maybe you've just been an old bait fisherman, you know, take a night crawler out and, and uh, or some kind of live bait and throw out and set and watch your line. But if you want to get into some uh, lure fishing or artificial and, and that's all I do. I don't, I don't live bait fish at all, hardly ever. Very, very few times will I live bait fish unless I'm crappie fishing or uh, something like that maybe. If they're not hitting and they're hitting minnows or something. Uh, smallmouth fishing to me, um, it depends on the time of year, of course, that you're fishing. Uh, of course, we have four seasons, you know, that's no secret. You got uh, summer, spring, you know, fall and winter. And each one of them seasons, the, the bass are going to react a lot different. So you have to kind of adjust to your um, seasons that you're fishing. Now, right now, we're, we're, we're getting right close to the summertime. And this is truly my favorite time to get out here and, and, and smallmouth fish uh, for, a number, for, for a number of reasons. One, the weather, you can get out here in, you know, sleeveless shirts and shorts or whatever. And two, you can wade the river. So it gives you a little bit more access than say in the, in, you know, when the water's cold and you have to walk the banks. And of course, you know, in the summertime, you got snakes also to have to contend with. Um, so I like to get out here and uh, just wade the river, you know, get, get about knee deep or maybe waist deep and just, just start throwing. But I basically only fish about three or four lures in the river in the summertime. And I'm gonna share it right quick with you, summertime tips for smallmouth bass. This is my favorite lure that I always start out on. Uh, all of, you know, the, the, over the years, I, I just take a rebel pop art. And uh, this is my favorite color. If you can get it in my hand, I don't know if the camera can pick it up. Let me get my. Right here, it's just, uh, I, it's, it's just a Tennessee shad color, kind of. Uh, it's a shad color. It's got the, uh, the black back and the little blue on the on the front. It's just a rebel pop bar. 
And uh, I like the smaller version because they got a little bit smaller version than this. But this is the, the this is the, sm the medium sized version, just the original, and it tends to work a lot better. Uh, it keeps it keeps a lot of your bluegill and this panfish. This is my favorite bait to throw for summertime smallmouth. How you work this, and if you notice, you know, if you notice down the river, kind of, if if you're waiting, it'd be all, you know, if you're waiting on that way, it'd be all right. But there's a lot of still water as you go on down. I tend to like to fish fast water in the summertime. Now, when the water's cold, you know, in the early spring or maybe up in the late fall or winter, of course, then you want to fish these steel holes a little bit deeper water. But in but as 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 the spawn happens in these rivers, uh, they'll move up into these shallow fast waters. I tend to like to fish the fast fast water like this more than the calm water. Now that you can catch them in both types, and you say, well, the top water bait is make more sense though in in, in uh, steel water well not really because you know bass they they're they're, they're a predator like fish of course fast like moving water fish. and throw these pop bar, uh pop bars and of course it's a top water lure and you can watch it and you can see them come up and hit it and uh i just like to get out and work them you know work the the, the pop bar pretty pretty fast uh, as at this time of year i like to move it real erratic you know and uh, try to pop it, as you can see the rod tip, if the camera can get on it, if you can see the way I move my rod tip. Now, when you're working this pop bar, a lot of people, I, I've seen people on the reservoirs or even lake fishing when they're fishing smallmouth, or, or largemouth rather. There's one. Whoa, it's a nice one here. <laughs> I don't know what this is. <laughs> Holy cow, he come up and nailed it. Yeah, oh, I foul hooked him. He 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 swarmed at it. It's what happened. He swarmed at it, and I hooked him in the belly. Oh, okay. He come up and got it, and I think I hooked him in the belly there. Whoa! <laughs> there we go. Let me wash him off here a minute. Okay. All right. There's a pretty nice little chunk. We. Ain't they pretty? They're just some of the prettiest fish you, you'll ever see. That's about the regular size we catch pretty much about every day right around here. Uh, you, you, you catch them a little bit bigger than this every once in a while. But uh, they give up a pretty good little fight. Bye-bye, baby. All right, back to what I was saying. <laughs> what I like to do is I like to throw what I like to do is I like to, when I'm fishing a pop bar in fast moving water, what I want to do is I want to, when I'm driving looking for a spot from the road or something, I want to find fast moving water with an eddy in it. Now an eddy is rapids like these with just a little hole of water. Now right here about where my pop bar is going to go is what is just a little eddy spot where the, where the water breaks into still water from a rapid fast moving water. And that's where you're going to find most of your smallmouth laying. They're going to lay in that steel water right on the edge of these rapids. And when the bait fish comes down in rapids, they usually come up and nail it. What I do is I'll throw, usually, I'll, I like to throw just a little bit beyond the, the steel, the steel, excuse me. I like to throw just a little bit beyond the steel water, like over into the rapids and then work it and once I get and, and pop it real hard and then once I get it in the steel little steel pockets I just let it set for a second and pop it real hard let it set pop it real hard and you're gonna have to pop these pretty hard because unlike you're fishing your steel water bass is gonna have to have to they're gonna have to hear that pop and so you're gonna have to be able to pop it pretty hard to uh, you have to be able to pop it pretty hard for them to be able to hear it and be attracted to it because that popping is what attracts them. So when you're fishing these fast moving waters, you got to pretty well give it a, a pretty good pop. Now what I'm saying before I caught that a lot bass, of your success when you're fishing artificial lures with any lure is your rod action. Now, <clears throat> you know, growing up around reservoirs and lakes and fishing largemouth, I've seen a lot of people make mistakes. Uh, in their lure presentation, just because of the the way that they're working, just by the rod action, the way they're working the lure. And <clears throat> if you'll notice, when I get in these fast moving waters, 
I'll throw out and I'll keep my rod tip pretty much at about a 10 o'clock. Instead of a 12 o'clock like this, I'll keep it about a 10 or even nine, about 9, 30, 10 o'clock and I'll just pop it give it a, and keep it right about there instead of holding it like this. See, instead of holding it like this, because what happens when you, when you, when you pull it like this and you're, and you're getting it at 12 o'clock up here, what that lure's doing, it's not getting the full pop because just, just the bottom lip is getting the pop. And a lot of times your bait's jumping up out of the water and you're not getting the, really the, the, the best pop noise. So what I like to do is keep it about at a, a 10 o'clock angle and just give it a sharp pop. Once I get in these steel, once I get in that steel water, then I kind of slow down the pop a little bit and maybe, you know, pop it, let it set, pop it two times, let Something it set. Something about topwater lures that I think is real important, and this is whether you fish a river like this or a lake or anything. Everything in, in nature moves with rhythm. If you watch a, a school of shad or you watch a, 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 a crawfish or, or, or any kind of a, a live bait, everything moves with rhythm. <clears throat> and so, Usually when, when, when a minna or something, that's what you're trying to betray with a pop bar, when, when a bait fish is in, in rapids, they're just trying to get out of it. They're just trying to get out of the rapids, so that's where this erratic, this erratic popping comes in. Once it gets in steel water, it'll start moving in rhythm, everything. You, want, you can watch a, a, a bait fish or, like I said, a crawfish or any kind of, a, of, a, of a, live, a, a live bait, and it'll move in rhythm. So once I get in these steel waters, if you're fishing steel waters, and this method will work on a lake, river, whatever. Once you get in, 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 in water, move that pop bar or move that top water bait in rhythm. What I like to do, now you set your own rhythm up, but what I like to do with a pop bar, I like to, I like to pop it two times, like one, two, stop. Let the ripples die down, one, two, stop. Let the ripples die down, then maybe do a one, two, three. One, two, three, stop. One, one, two, stop. One, one, two, three. Do that one, two, three, one, one, two, three, and usually them it, it attracts just I, I feel like it attracts just a little bit more than just the erratic you know popping that you would do in fast moving water because you're, you're, you, it's a rhythm. And a lot of times that when a fish gets real you know finicky and they've, and they've been pressured you know a lot of fish and pressure, or if a fish just ain't in the mood, a lot of times that that rhythm a lot of times will get them to to come up. And Something hit else through. I think it's important. Of course, is, is your rod and reel, of course, and your line. Um, for river fishing like this, I like to fish a, um, a six foot medium action rod. Now, when I, when I say medium action, what I, like, what I, like, I don't like a real heavy action rod, but I don't like a real ultra light rod for fishing this kind of, for fishing this kind of uh, 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 fishing like we're doing here. I like a medium action rod. What I like is I like a rod that's got a real good bend in the tip for working these topwater lures like this. I don't want one real stiff at the end because a lot of your action, a lot, a lot of your action comes from your tip of your rod, okay? So really, when I, when, I, when I purchase a rod, I want to really know how that tip is. Now, of course, if you're fishing heavy jigs or something like if you're flipping and pitching in, in a reservoir lake and you're fishing for largemouth, of course you want a heavy action rod, one that don't bend so much. You want a big backbone back here. But for smallmouth fishing like in the rivers and, and little creeks like this, a uh, six foot medium action rod with a good bend in the tip is just perfect for working these topwater lures and little crankbaits and, and jigs. There's really about only a handful of baits that I, I carry out to the river like this for smallmouth fishing. And I don't carry a big tackle box because usually I'm waiting. We're not waiting today because we're doing this video. But uh, I, this is about a, this is about my archive of uh, you know of uh, lures that I carry. And usually I get a little clip or something, and I'll clip it right to my side and get you a little clip or something, and, and just carry this with you. Or if you got a you got a something to stick this in uh, and carry it down the creek with you. Or if you're fishing on the bank, this is really about all you need fishing smallmouth. Now here's mostly about all I use. I, of course I've got my little uh, spinner baits and these work real good. And they're just a little old uh, uh, a Strike King spinner bait or a little uh, Booyah spinner bait or it's just a, a small, you don't want nothing big it's just, you know, for the river like this. You just want a little small spinner bait. I like to stay with white or chartreuse and muddy water. Um, but white works just about all the time in the river and if it's muddy water I like a chartreuse or a little bit lighter color. 
your crankbaits, uh, when, you, when you're fishing crankbaits in the river for smallmouth, you don't want to go real big. In fact, you want to go about a foot to two foot deep. Uh, and uh, I, I just use these little crankbaits like this um, with a little, uh, it's got the little lip on it. It's about a foot diver, maybe two foot diver at the most. And uh, I try to stay with, I try to stay with the, um, the basic colors as I can. And so I try to stay with the shad color or whatever is mostly floating. If you'll just catch uh, any kind of these minnows in, 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 your, in your little rivers uh, through nets or whatever, try to match it up to the best color that you can find in the store. But stay small. Stay, stay as small as you can when you're fishing smallmouth. This is one of the, my favorite uh, crankbaits to use in the river, and especially this time of year because the crawfish are so abundant right now. But that's these little, uh, <clears throat> these little cotton cordell in a, in a crawfish color, just like this one. Now what you're emulating here is you're not emulating a bait fish, of course you're emulating a crawfish. So again, your presentation can't be the same as say this other crankbait. What I like to do on this one, of course, is uh, throw it out, wind it, stop it, wind it, stop it, wind it, stop it, because what does a crawfish do? They back up. And this is a floater. So once you stop, it starts backing up. Wind it, stop it, it'll float back up. That is a great little lure for uh, river fish in smallmouth summertime. That's one of the best little lures you'll find. When they're not hitting top water, get you a few of them right there. Yeah, I promise you, you're gonna have some fun. As far as jigs, uh, which I think uh, round about, if I had just one lure to fish in the river in the summertime or any kind of time, if I just had one lure to choose from, I'd choose a jig uh, any day. A jig will work year-round, and I, I usually like these little curly tails just with the lead head, just like this one. Uh, this is a purple uh, smoke color, and it's got the little smoky purple color, and that's a really good color. Uh, I like this one. This is called Summertime Crawl. Again, you're trying to emulate a crawfish. It's just got the little lead head with the single hook, little curly tail. <clears throat> And let's see, uh, and this one's called a Fat Albert. It's purple with smoke. Uh, it's just a great, it's got a big tail that really turns up the water. Uh, I like this one for more dingier waters. Like when it's a little bit m more muddy and you need that vibration. I like to go to this one just a little bit more than I do a smaller type. So this is a very good, <clears throat> it's called a Fat Albert by Zoom. Of course, you just got your little uh, lead heads. You know, everybody knows what a lead head is, just a little old lead head with a hook. Try to stay eight ounce, eighth, eighth of an ounce or one sixteenth of an ounce. Don't get real big because um, you get hung up a lot in the summertime like this. Okay, you when don't. you're fishing a jig, uh, we're going to try this. The, the water is just a little bit dingy today. We're going to try this little fat Albert here. I want to show you right quick what I like to do. I like to throw it out in fast moving water again. Bring it over into the steel water and just let it fall. Just now what throw you it want out, to do on this. In that fast moving water right on the edge of it, bring it into the steel water and let it sink just a minute. And then what just kind of work it. Now, when you're working a jig, what I like to do is it, to me it's 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 all in your it's all in your rod tip. So what I like to do is I like to get it, I like to let it sink and then I like to just keep my rod pretty much at a about a nine o'clock, about nine o'clock. Just like this, straight out. Now, I think a lot of the mistake that people use on plastic worms and jigs, uh, 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 especially plastic worms in, in, in a lake situation or a reservoir, is, now I want you to imagine, here comes the jig of the, or, or the plastic worm. Okay, it hits the water and it falls and it falls and the bass hears it hits the water, they, they follow it down to the, to the bottom. And all of a sudden, this worm or this jig it just sails like Superman. It just, boom, it just goes all the way over their head, all the way down. And, what the, and, and that just happened by one rod, just one swoop of the rod. Because a lot of people, they get out here, and they'll throw it and they'll let it hit the bottom, and then they'll make this long sweep with the rod. What that, it's going, whew, just, just like Superman. So I like little short bumps, just little short from nine to about, nine to 10 o'clock, just about. Maybe just give it a, a little. And what you're doing, you're pretty much doing this with that jig. You're just working the bottom with that jig, just little short motions. A lot of times that, that really pays off 
just doing them little short motions more than the big long swooping sweeps with the rod. Again, to get a medium action rod with a with a good sensitive tip where you can feel where you can feel that bottom and you can feel that that hit because a lot of times on jigs they won't they won't attack it, you know, say they, as they will with a crankbait or something else. What they'll do is they'll they'll just suck it in. So you have to watch your line or feel for that little tick. And that's when you set the hook. So again, try to stay with basic colors, you know, purple, a, a smoke color, crawfish color, just whatever matches um, the bait fish in your area. That's kind of what you want to stay with. Always keep a, you know, keep your line tight. Of course, just about everybody knows that that's, that's been fishing. Keep your line tight. Don't have a lot of slack in your line. And a lot of times, you'll feel them little bites, them little, them, just them little, them little hits that you'll miss a lot of times with a slack line. And plus, slack line, you can't really get a good hook set. So I like to keep it as I like to keep that line as tight as I can and work that and work that lure. Thing about jigs are, you never know what you're going to catch in a river. You really don't. You know, everything will hit a jig. Just, just I mean, catfish, white bass. Small mouth, large mouth, yeah, it don't matter. Everything, crappies, everything will just about hit a jig. So really, you never know what's going to hit them. And that's kind of why I like to fish a jig. A jig is just a universal lure that will work with about anything. <clears throat> now, in, in this particular river, we've got smallmouth bass and uh, muskies and largemouth, walleyes, a few of them. Uh, Got a few rainbow trout that people just throwed in here. They, they don't stock it, but I have caught trout in here. So summertime smallmouth fishing can be very fun. And like I said, I don't use a lot of lures when I come out here because I'm usually wading. So just stick with your basic and you can have a summertime full of fun right between turkey season and deer season. And just get out here and, and I try to stay again with jigs, pop bar, get you two or three pop bars and get you a couple little spinner baits. And a lot of times you just Stick them in your pocket and take off wading and get, get in these little eddy spots and find you some fast moving water with these little shallow spots like this and these little steel holes. And you can really have a lot of fun well, I hope that catching these helped you maybe on a few tips, catch the small mouth. We're going to move on up the river and see what happens. But we're going to get out here this summer and try to have a little bit of fun. I hope you have a safe summer. Both seasons will be here before you know it. So stay tuned. We'll, we'll try to have some more fishing tips videos for you this 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 summer